Now, for most cyclists out there, it's going to come to a point when it's time to replace the tire on your bike. Perhaps it's got a big cut in it and something which is not that safe to ride on, or maybe you've actually just worn it out. Either way, for some people, it is quite a daunting process. Perhaps it's your first time attempting it, or maybe you're just a little bit unsure. So today, let's look at how to do it nice and easy. Now you are going to need a couple of tools for the job. So firstly, you are going to need some tyre levers, so that's to be able to remove the tyre from the wheel, and also a pump to be able to get it inflated back up to a decent pressure. And maybe, just maybe a spanner, depending on what type of wheels you have. So first off, you're actually going to need to remove the wheel in which the tyre you're replacing from the bicycle. And now if you've got a quick release skewer, it's nice and simple, just undo that lever and remove the wheel from the bike. If you've got nuts on the axle, then simply use the spanner to release one nut at a time so you can take that wheel out. Once it's out, it's simply a case of deflating the tire. So in this case, I've got a Presta valve on this rim, so I'm gonna unscrew the actual valve here and release all the air. If you've got a Schrader type valve, so that's one of the ones which you find on a car, then simply depress that center section. And again, you're gonna remove all of the air from the inner tube. Now the next step is to actually insert one of the tire levers in between the bead of the tire and the actual rim itself. Now I tend to actually always work opposite the valve. The reason being you tend to have a little bit less material because around the valve itself it's a little bit of bulk so here you have got essentially the most room to be able to play with and insert that lever underneath the bead so once you actually get it hooked underneath try and grab your tire lever and actually insert it behind a spoke there keeping it nicely in place then with your second tire lever try and put it underneath the bead of the tire, again, as close as possible to the existing one. Sometimes, depending on how tight your rim and tire combination is, it's not possible. In this case, I've managed to do it about five centimeters away, and then simply release that bead over the side of the rim, and work around until you've got enough over that it's nice and comfortable for you to simply use the tire lever to push the remainder of the tire away from the rim. Now do take care whilst doing this that the inner tube itself doesn't actually get pinched in between the tire and the rim and using the uh, obviously the tire lever there. So just pay close attention to it. So now that you've got half of the tire off of the rim you're going to want to remove the inner tube. So again working opposite the valve simply release that inner tube from within and then work it around until you get to the valve and then it's easier to remove it that way basically because in the case of this wheel it's got a deep section uh, rim so the valve is actually pretty long just remove that then the rest of the tire should easily just pop off slide off like so so now that you've removed your inner tube and tire it's worth just having a look on the actual surface of the rim bed here so if you've got yourself a rim tape whether it's plastic or cotton in this case just make sure that all of those spoke holes are being covered nicely. And again, there's no actual material defect inside, which could give you a puncture going forward. Once it's all good, you are ready to fit that new tire. Next thing is to grab your new tire and have a look on the sidewall of the actual tire itself and see if there's any directional arrows. In the case of this one, there is one here which is indicated with rotation. Uh, the reason being that is likely to help with both rolling resistance and also displacing any surface water on the road that you may encounter. If there is one of these arrows, make sure it is facing in the direction of travel while, once it's fitted onto the rim. And then I like to always find the manufacturer's logo and then line it up with the valve hole. Just a nice little finishing touch. So now that you've got yourself your manufacturer's logo and you've found the valve hole, you want to insert half of the bead of the tire inside of the bed of the rim and slowly work that around so it's going like so. So now that you've got half of the tire fitted, it's worth grabbing the inner tube and simply inflating it very gently, so only a small amount, just to get the inner tube to actually have a shape. And then lock down that valve. So now the inner tube has a bit of shape to it. Actually insert it into the valve hole, which is nice and easy to find because 
you've had that manufacturer's logo and then simply tuck it inside of the tire like so. Now if you've put too much air in it won't go in there that easily so just be aware of that and then at the valve start tucking that remaining bead of the tire over the sidewall of the rim and in towards the center. So if it is a little bit tight towards the end just go around the actual rim and the tire and essentially squeeze the beads inwards so they go into there's a deeper groove in the center of the rim in most cases and that's going to give you a little bit of slack for you to be able to play with when it comes to trying to get this final bit over the side wall of the rim so just make sure like i say that it is in the center of the rim now when you do get to a situation like this when you have a very tight fitting bit of tire perhaps then it's best to actually put the wheel onto the floor so you can get a little bit more leverage inside of your wrist to actually get that tire over the side wall of the rim. What though, if you've used up all of your energy and you still can't get the bead of the tire over the side wall of the rim and into the center? Well, I don't normally advise using them, but you can in fact use a tire lever. So you would simply place it underneath and then over the side wall, so the hook of the rim, and then gently, really, really gently, making sure you're not pinching the tube whatsoever, move it over. So just levering it into place. Now the next stage, what I like to do is just to make sure the tube has not become pinched in between the bead of the tire and the bed of the rim. So I just go around and work the bead away from the sidewall and just check to make sure that basically there's no sign of any rubber poking out underneath. If there is, then you can kind of wiggle around the tire and hopefully that inner tube will just pop back into place. Then I'll repeat that process after putting about 15 psi of air into the inner tube, which is about one bar of pressure. And then once it's all good, inflate it to the maximum recommended which is indicated on the sidewall that way the tire actually finds its shape as well as in the case of using with a tubeless compatible rim actually pops into the correct position on the rim now that your tire is fully seated onto the rim and running nice and smooth it's probably likely that you are going to need to adjust the pressure there to suit both you and your riding style and then refit it into the frame now there are many of you out there who have got different ways of fitting tires and tubes back onto a wheel. I'll be keen to read them. I have fitted literally thousands of tires onto wheels over the years and I've never had a problem doing that one yet. However, there is a little tip and this one's for free is to get a tire, and put it over a radiator if it's a particularly stubborn one. That way it does tend to just soften up a little bit and be a little bit easier to put on. But as ever, I wanna know your tips and tricks for fitting those stubborn tires. Now, do remember as well to like and share this video with a friend. I believe that actually fitting a tire is one of those real essentials because you never know when it's you or someone else stranded at the roadside and you're gonna need that skill. Now also remember to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com where we've got a whole array of goodies for you. And now for another great video, this one on how to calculate the right tire pressure for yourself, click just down here.